Uh, I put my truck on backwards. I keep doing that. That is ridiculous. Skating for how long? Joke all you want. Joke's on me. So recently, Kempskate sent me their new improved wheelbase modifying tool. I've made a video about this before, so I'm going to be answering some of the questions that you guys asked in the last video, as well as going more in depth into what these tools can really do for your skateboarding because you can move the nose, the tail, and adjust the wheelbase. There's a lot of different things you can do with these. I actually got two different sizes. I will leave a link down below to this tool. It's super cool. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to modify your wheelbase, how to modify the nose and tail and then actually skate the board and see the difference in it and see like what you can actually do and why you would want to change those things these kind of things are really subjective to each skater like what works for me may not work for you however i want to show you what you can do so then you can adjust it to whatever you think might work best for your skateboarding something that i'm definitely going to be trying it on too is this twin shape board that my friend from sam life skateboards recently said well can't lie it's not really my friend he hit me up and asked if he could send me a board and I gladly accepted. I made a video all about this board, but it's a twin shape. It's really cool. It's a big board. So I'm going to be adjusting this wheelbase since it's a twin. A lot of people have the Andy Anderson board, so they had questions about that. Somebody mentioned it previously in the last video. And uh, yeah, we're going to see how that goes. I might just adjust it to where I get a little more nose and a little more tail and not even adjust one truck. So we're just going to kind of play around with this tool in this video and just see all the different options that you really can do. What's cool about this one, it's an upgraded version and it's metal versus plastic. So you can probably reuse it a lot more. You don't have to worry about it breaking. Sometimes, uh, you know, I like to just throw these in the pocket or throw them in somewhere. You don't have to worry about them. Now that they're nice and durable, this is actually another upgrade. I think they're constantly innovating. Chemskates is cool. They have one where they actually have the drill bit that is included inside of it. Or there's like a little lock mechanism basically in this tool for the drill bit. And the drill bit does come with this tool. That's super, super, super cool. So you don't have to go out there looking for any other tools. Basically, Basically, you just need a drill to get this done. I don't want to get into the crazy madness that, that gets like almost to where skateboarding is not fun. There's a balance to where you can just have fun with these things. That's what I don't want to do. I don't want to make skateboarding not fun. So just want to make sure that uh, we know we stay on track with keeping skateboarding fun. That's what these are for ultimately is just adjusting your board and keeping it um, creative. I always like changing up my board. basically how the tool works. There's many other ways to use it, but I wanna get into some examples and kind of show you what you can do. With the first setup, we're gonna to go to a skate park, we're gonna test it out, we're gonna try some different wheelbases and some different things just to show you kind of like, and also so I can see what advantages and disadvantages I might get. In the last video where I was adjusting my wheelbase using this wheelbase modifying tool, I was kind of using more of a practical feedback. Basically what I was doing was making a longer, shorter wheelbase and just telling you how it felt but I was getting used to the board. So this time I'm not gonna get super used to the board. I actually have six tricks that I'm gonna be doing so that I can have more of like an exact feedback and kind of see what the advantages and disadvantages are. And this morning I actually made some more wheelbase modifications on my street setup. This is an 8.3 nil blender heated wheel board. So I made some bigger and longer wheelbase on the skinny board as well as my 9.1 twin. So we're gonna be trying some different things out in this video and the tricks I'm gonna be trying kind of in a row to see what it's like with the different wheelbases is ollie half cab rock and roll blunt faking slash nose blunt tail side and smith i'll be doing those front side and back side just really get a feel for what it's like so for the first experiment i'm going to be trying the twin board it's going to be with the truck a little bit higher on the nose so it's a little bit of a wider wheelbase now and afterwards i'll give you some feedback and then we'll run through some different options and just kind of see what it would be like using this tool and some of the advantages and disadvantages like I said not getting used to it just feeling what it's like right away
one is complete. Just tried out the board, did those different tricks, and it was actually pretty interesting. So first thing I will explain is that I did move this truck out. So this is where normally the truck sits. I moved it out so there's less tail or less nose depending on which way you skate it. And the interesting thing that I found really quickly is actually the side that has less um, nose, less tail, there's less flat space right here. I had much better Smith grind. So backsmith and front smith. I was able to lock into it and push out of it really quick where, where it had more flat space. I felt like I, had, I was like almost getting stuck in it and I had to like almost ollie out of it and it felt kind of sketchy. So that was one thing I really noticed with the Smith grinds is having less flat space was a good advantage for me. And then to the counterpoint, tail slides were really nice with the flat space. Like I had really good front side and back side tail slides. Like those were almost first try for me. Normally it takes me a couple tries. So tail slides with the flat space is really, really nice. So if you have a twin board, you can skate it both ways. That's what's pretty nice, but that's a give and take. And that's kind of the point I want to make in this video. Like where you get one good thing comes with a bad thing. And then when it comes to blunts, it's actually really surprising to me having less nose or having less space in between the truck and the concave of the board essentially was a lot better so having shorter space and no space I was able to get in and get out quicker where when I have more space I was getting stuck in the blunt and it was like harder for me to pop out which was really weird again kind of to my surprise so yeah with the shorter side and the blunts I was able to get in get out and then when it comes to ollie it's pretty standardized I will say maybe I'll take that one out of here with the truck closer to the tail you're gonna get a snappier quicker ollie and then with it farther you're gonna get a slower one so that's pretty obvious we'll stick to the trick specifics now what I kind of want to do next experiment I think I'm gonna do is actually bring both of these trucks in so I'm gonna make the whole wheelbase a lot shorter This is gonna be the super dramatic short wheelbase. Trucks are both on the nose and the tail really high up. So there's a lot of flat space in between the nose and the tail. And uh, this is gonna be, uh, it looks crazy right now, but it'll be fun. Let's, let's try the tricks. I actually have a lot of fun on the shorter wheelbase. It's actually really snappy, it's quick. The one thing that I feel like I struggle with with the shorter wheelbase is front side Smith grinds. I feel like I can't really like sit into them and like pinch them and like push them out. That's one thing. It's kind of ironic though, like now that I tried the switch blunt to regular and fakie blunt or blunt to fakie with the trucks both pushed in, it's actually pretty nice. So there's really something about the wheelbase being symmetrical that makes it skate really nice. There's something about that that's just really cool, especially with the twin shape. So I feel like I can skate it there's no wrong way to skate it basically so it's really cool i'm gonna try out the street board with a longer and shorter wheelbase and see what the difference is with the tail and if i have that same kind of uh sort of skate experience with the skinnier board essentially from the 9-1 to the 8-3 is such a dramatic change like I'll, immediately i feel like a giant and i'm just like skating on this tiny board it doesn't feel right but uh that's just kind of the point of this video to experiment and see what the difference is so let me try some tricks and this wheelbase is a lot longer like as you can tell I made it super long for a super skinny board just to uh, kind of make this extreme contrast to see what it skates like. So that was a shorter session with the long wheelbase on the skinny board. I will say this is probably the worst wheelbase setup that you can do. A really skinny board with a really long wheelbase makes it so that it's really drawn out, hard to churn, it's like really stiff to churn, and it's hard to lift your board up. When you have a skinny board, typically you want a shorter wheelbase because you want that more snappy response, but it really depends. Like all of this is based off the skinny that I do, the experimenting that I do. Like I said before, I was actually pretty surprised with 
the experiment of moving the truck lower from the tail and on the tail. That was a pretty surprising thing with the Smith grinds and tail slides like I was saying before. But yeah, overall, my favorite wheelbase is a 14.5 still. I think that's a really good wheelbase, especially on something like an 8.3, 8.5 in between that width. It's a really nice wheelbase, especially for like overall skating. Like you can skate pretty much anything with that, but for a street setup, it is nice having that short wheelbase. It's a little bit snappier, a little bit quicker to the ground, quick contact. But yeah, overall, it's a good experiment just to mess around with your different wheelbases. Hopefully uh, this tool can kind of make it fun for you because ultimately when you're getting a board, you're kind of getting it on the width and the length. A lot of times it's hard to, to customize the wheelbase. That's what's really cool about this tool. And it will weaken the board. Obviously you're drilling holes into the board. It's going to weaken it. Maybe uh, get more pressure cracks over time. But at the end of the day, if you're jumping down things and if you're skating your board and you're abusing it, that's also weakening it. So kind of got to like pick and choose your battles. Although with life skateboards, they do customize your board. So there's options out there. If you want a super spec out customized board, you can do it yourself or you can reach out to a really cool company. So a comment from Kevin Skates on the last video that I made about this makes a lot of sense and this is sort of why they made this tool and invented this tool so it might add some context and I just wanted to make sure I let you know what that is and they said I usually mod a wider deck like an 8.75 or 9 inch width deck using the 3 8 tool. I mod it on the tail end making the tail 3 8 longer in turn making the wheelbase 3 8 shorter. This gives the perfect pop leverage and pop timing that I need for the wholesome kickflips and just about any other flip trick. It also makes my nose and tail length almost identical. I can also better lock into tail slides with a slightly larger flat surface on my tail before the angle starts. Now I had the same experience and I'll just say I read this comment afterwards. I just pinned it before because I knew I wanted to add this into it and that's for more of a flip trick perspective and I think I'm coming from more of a transition perspective so a lot of what I had and the experience that I just went through was a lot from a different experience than someone that's flipping a lot of their bowlers. And I will talk about like the different wheelbases I ended up trying in a second. But I did want to address some of the comments in the last video. Rubio said, after watching this video, it made me wonder how a twin tip board would feel that have identical nose and tail or something like that. And I tried to sort of examine that in this video. So hopefully that gave you some answers to what it would be like using this tool on a identical shape. Obviously there's so many more options that it can do, but this video would go on forever. Let me know your thoughts below. Is this changing the wheelbase or are we just changing where the chucks are on the board. Isn't that changing the wheelbase? I don't know, I'm confused. This board comes in at my favorite wheelbase, which is a 14.5 with the bolts that are currently on it. And the way you measure that is the center of the bolt to the center of the other bolt, the first bolt. So the back of this bolt to the front of this bolt. And essentially that is a 14.5. So that's what this board actually came at, which is what I love, but we adjusted it. For the first sort of trial, what I did is actually just moved one truck. I didn't move both. I just moved one slightly off of the nose a little bit more. So that made the short wheelbase a little bit shorter. And what that ended up coming out to was a 14 inch wheelbase. Is that right? Is that what I ended up doing? I ended up doing a 14 inch wheelbase. So I took it down quite a bit, but so I ended up changing it to 14 inches when I ended up taking it down off and getting more of that flat space. That's what it ended up being. And I actually didn't mind that much, but I felt like I didn't have as much control. So it was really nice getting that, that lock-in spot. So it might even be worth like getting a longer board now that I think about it. And then even changing a wheelbase in from like a, whatever it is, 15 to a 4.5. So you get that flat space and you're getting that 14.5 wheelbase. It's just something to think about. Obviously, this can get into like the skateboard madness to where it's no longer fun. So the idea with this tool is just to mix it up, change your board up, have fun with it. It's not to like take it too serious where I don't know, like chem skates will definitely get you more information. So you, if you're into the details and the specs, you can check them out on Instagram. Like they're putting the the what do you call it? The leveler on their tail and they're getting the pop and everything. So it's getting very linear. I just like to kind of mess with the wheel bases and see what they did for me. It was really cool to see how well I locked into those nose blunts and into those tail slides and just how it felt different with the Smith grinds. The Smith grind locks were a lot different and just how stiff it was. So when I ended up changing this board, I ended up changing it pretty long. Let's see exactly what the wheelbase was. 
when I made this one. I did 15 and a quarter on this one. So that is a big boy. So that's that's pretty long wheelbase, 15 and a quarter and on the street board. So maybe uh, I probably have the holes that I should do that on this board. But yeah, having the really long wheelbase on the street board was uh, sort of an oxymoron. Not, not really ideal setup, but just to show you like how hard it was. If I made this wheelbase shorter, which I have the holes for, I probably will do. I'll be snapping quicker. I'll be able to flip it better, things like that. And I'll have more of that flat surface. So that's the big advantage. I, I kind of did the opposite of what you really want to do with the street board, just to show you kind of in context. So hope you guys enjoy this little video, messing around with the wheelbase, the wheelbase mod tool. Make sure you smash that like button. If you enjoy this video, subscribe if you're not already. See y'all next one. Mash.